On paper, when you look at Splatoon's amazing variety with things like a bathtub that lobs blobs that can bounce around to a ballpoint pen with different modes of charging and dualies that can slide around, Jet Squatcher doesn't seem that special. It's just your long range shooter. But while it may seem standard, it's probably one of the most unique and fun weapons of the game due to its playstyle, and today I want to talk about it and why that amazing weapon is today one of the most hated weapons in the game. If you enjoy this video and want more Splatoon analysis from me, be sure to subscribe, and without further ado, let's get into this weapon. Jet Squatcher is the longest range out of all the shooters, with solid accuracy and high damage output. This weapon is the only shooter to be considered a backline or anchor weapon, meaning it plays more at a distance, similar to weapons like the Explorer splasher, heavy spotling, or chargers. However, what makes it special compared to all of those is because it's a shooter, it has way better mobility and versatility than all of them. Even something like ballpoint will struggle at mid-range just because its short range mode just doesn't reach and its long range mode has a slow kill time, as well as the weapon having to charge before it can fire. Jet Squatcher can fight at a variety of ranges and has consistent mobility and shot output. This puts the weapon in a really special spot as being the most adaptable out of all the backlines, and that makes it really special. A lot of players can struggle to get into backline due to the slower weapons or having to deal with things like a charge, but this weapon is one of the easiest to get into and has one of the most adaptable playstyles, which fits for a lot of people. And while Jet Squatcher started as a solid weapon in Splatoon 1 and saw use throughout Splatoon 2, it's also one of the most buffed weapons in the game's history. We got better ink efficiency with the main weapon, better strafe speed with the main weapon, better damage on the weapon, as well as better shot velocity, better shot accuracy right after jumping, making it faster to go into squid form or use a sub-weapon, making it faster to shoot after coming out of squid form, better pain on landing shots, and with the addition of MP, it also gained better bullet velocity, better range, and better accuracy on the ground. It's hard to find a stat that wasn't buffed with Jet Squelcher, and that moved it up from just a solid option to a top-tier weapon on both of its kits. And with Jet Squelcher's popularity exploding, everyone can see how fun a weapon- uh, no, it's completely hated, actually. Like, more than anything else in the game. So, what exactly went wrong? Well, the first thing people tend to point to are the specials it has in Splatoon 2, being Tena Missiles and Stingray, and to the credit of those complaints, those are some of the most hated specials in Splatoon history, especially right now. They're used at a distance, they force either displacement of the entire team or having a giant aimable death laser on you for over 7 seconds, it's definitely not fun to fight those. However, Jet Squatcher isn't exactly the only weapon to have those specials, and plenty of weapons with those are actually pretty linked, so okay, maybe it's the special out Output. Fair point, the output of Jet Squatcher specials is pretty ridiculous, and if you've been on Twitter, you've seen vanilla Jet Squatchers upping 10 plus missiles all the time just as something that they do. But again, not the only weapon that does that, and it's far more hated than the other weapons that do. Would Jet Squatcher be just as hated if it spammed Booyah Bomb or Ink Storm? Probably not as bad, but it would still have that problem. And if Jet was 200p, it would definitely get less missiles, but would it get a low quantity of them or have its playstyle change that much? Probably not. The problem is the playstyle that people are intuitively taught by playing Jet Squelcher is a passive special spam one. Look, you have specials that can be used at a distance. Look at the score at the end of the game. Did you see how high your special counter was? That means you did good, right? Now, of course, people who main the weapon, and especially at higher levels with things like Custom Jet, do help their team and are more aggressive, but that's, again, not something that's super easy to understand and not how the majority of people in ranked are going to play the weapon. Not only is sitting back and special spamming one of the most boring playstyles to play against in the game and hence why it's so hated, but it's also just completely the opposite of what made Jet Squelcher specifically so special as a backline. It's not just the kits and points for special it has now, any lower amount of points for special and any special that could be used at a distance would encourage this lame and unhealthy playstyle. And to add to this, before we look to Splatoon 3 fixing this weapon like with most of the problems, let's take a real quick look at Splatoon 1 custom Jet Squelcher. While this weapon didn't have anywhere near the buffs it had today, this this weapon was played in a much more healthily and aggressive playstyle, maintaining the burst bomb that the custom jet has now, but instead having a 200p Kraken. This special is a transformation one that required you to get up close to people and was primarily used for getting kills or pressuring people out of areas, which required Jet Squelcher to move forward. That being said, it wasn't perfect. The main critique I hear of this kit is that Kraken is too selfish and aggressive. Rather than being something that encourages you to help your team and play together, it's more, okay, go in and make your own self selfish plays. Which, while is still definitely fun, I can see it being a change compared to wanting to be more aggressive to help your 
13, which should be what's more encouraged. And on top of that, Vanilla Jet Squadron Splatoon 1 had Splash Wall and Ink Strike, a global special which, while not as annoying as the 2 in Splatoon 2, still led to it having that annoying playstyle. The only reason it wasn't complained about as hard is because it just wasn't that useful a niche and therefore wasn't very popular. So moving into Splatoon 3, I want to keep as many of the buffs on Jet Squatcher as possible, but work on giving it a kit and maybe some slight changes to encourage it to have a better playstyle of going in and supporting its team, the way the weapon was made to play and is most fun for both the person using it and fighting it. I have two changes for the main weapon to start. The first and most obvious one is 200 points for special as the default instead of 180, which would mean it takes a lot longer to get specials for the weapon. But I think another one that could be more intuitive is changing its paint curve. Rather than painting kind of well at all ranges, it would paint a little bit better closer to it and paint less and less well the further to the edge of the range you get. Jet Squatcher would still keep its painting range and it would probably paint around the same amount it does now, but it would paint less good at a distance, meaning it would have to work a lot harder to get a higher amount of specials and would be encouraged to move forward more often. Sub weapons, I think it should keep Burst Bomb. There are a few other ones that could probably work, but I think Burst is just as versatile as the main weapon and fits super well. It does just enough to help the weapon selfishly to encourage its playstyle while also primarily being used to support its team, and it's worked out well in two Splatoon games prior. We only know seven of Splatoon 3 specials right now, so I'm gonna rank them really fast. Killer Whale and Triple Ink Strike should absolutely not happen. While it's not global range for Triple Ink Strike, it can still be used at a complete safe distance even farther than Jet Squatcher itself. And while Killer Whale does encourage you to push up with the special and use it for chip damage, I feel like it would be easy to just assume your teammates would do that and use it more passively, having them be the ones to follow up. Next up is Zipcaster and Trizuka. These are both a bit easy to use at a distance, so it doesn't encourage you to get as close as I would like, and they're a bit selfish and more aggressive. Not as bad as the two below it, though. Crab Tank could work. It seems a bit too selfish on paper and it can be used at a distance, but it seems less optimal than everything below it, and the AoE shots could be nice to combo with your teammates. Now we got Ink Vacuum, which would be good for it. While it can be used at a distance, it still has to get a lot closer than the main weapon itself, and it encourages supporting your team since you want to try to eat the opponent's shots, protecting your teammate to give you a powerful blast. That being said, as a transformation special, I think it's actually a lot better on more slower backlines, such as Charger, which would rarely have a reason to move forward in comparison to how much Jet Squatcher could do it. Therefore, I think Big Bubbler would easily be the most optimal, since this one relies entirely on your positioning, just like like the Splatoon 1 Kraken did, but rather than being super aggressive and only being able to use selfishly, its main purpose is protecting for teammates and giving jumps to the beacon. I'm not saying it can't be used selfishly, but even if you're going to, it requires you to move forward to get a lot of value. Using it defensively to protect yourself would be extremely limited. On top of that, compared to every other special in the game, it being super reliant on where you're standing means you're encouraged to both move forward and stand near teammates. Like with Burst Bomb, the versatility of the special encourages the adaptable playstyle. Therefore, it's easy easily the most intuitive special to build towards an optimal and fun playstyle for both the user and people playing against it. While Jet Squatcher gets a lot of hate these days, if they rework the weapon a little bit, give it an optimal kit, and encourage that playstyle that makes it so special, I think it'll be one of the most beloved weapons in the third game. That being said, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about Jet Squatcher and what changes you want to see for it in Splatoon 3. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys in a future video.